With the H440 and the XT pretty much says buy to all optical drives, but do you really need them and how good is this case anyway? Hello everyone, it's Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews and today we're looking at NZXT's H440 with special edition colors. So we're doing a green um, themed PC, so it's a Razer themed PC. I'm fully aware that Razer is working together with NZXT to make a custom Razer version. Um, but the, the guy, a friend of mine who I'm building this for, has no patience that the Razer case is still going to be like two or three months away. So. We've got a bunch of stuff really. We also have Bit Phoenix Alchemy cables. NZXT also does them, but the Bit Phoenix ones are really cool. We got NZXT sleeved LEDs, so green LEDs. We even got, you know, colorful zip ties. So, last but not least, some Sharkoon fan, but we'll review this individually later. Anyway, let's uh, get. No, let's show you guys around the box first. So, on the front. Um, same picture with this complete hue um, colored picture and then on the, uh, the back side of the special edition cases you get the black and red version and some information in different languages should you be picking it up in a store but the only thing I'm really going to show you is the spec list so on there you can see that it's 22 centimeters wide it's 51 high and um, 48 centimeters deep. It's a mixture of steel and plastic, should weigh around 10 kilograms. Um, you have, actually we'll go about the uh, that stuff first, but most importantly, 180 millimeter high CPU coolers, ample room for graphics card, especially when you take the cages out. And you get four fans with it, so three in the front and one in the back. All right, let's get it out of the box. So it's just no fancy box or anything. It's just some tape at the top that you have to cut open without cutting open your hands like you know, people do when they have knives in their hands. So, on top, um, it actually shipped in this box, uh, so that's a really good test on how good the box is. So we have our invoice from the company that sold us this case, and then we have the case itself. So anyway, inside the case we just Let's just get it out of there first. There we go. And underneath all of this plastic, uh, we first find an instruction booklet. All right, so here's what it looks like once it's out of the box. So as you can see, it has this really, really cool styling. I mean, I, I really like the styling of this case. Um, this plastic is a tiny bit too shiny, so it looks a, a tiny little bit cheaper than this black, matte black uh, finish on all the steel parts of the case is incredible. It actually looks very very high quality in this case. Now this is the top of the case as you can see it's in just completely plain there's nothing on there and then um, on the front top you get your power button with an LED, a reset button, got your headphones out, microphone in, two USB 3's and one USB 2. Now you do get this little green edge around the USB port but the ports themselves are not colored in the same color as the plastic on the case. Um, now with the Razer version, it is all uh, lovely green. So the reason I did the top first is because the front of the case is incredibly dull or plain really. It's There's nothing on the front of this case other than this angled design. Uh, you know, some people will like it from the, uh, the H630, others may not like it. So let's now move on to the uh, the bottom of the case. All right, so this is the case uh, bottom. Now, as you can see, there's not really much there. Um, we only have a, a single removable dust filter. So that comes out like this. And you then have slots there. 
Um, what I do see though is that there is a cable management grommets, uh, grommets, sticky out thingies, and what looks like room to put an SSD or your water cooling pump or a reservoir or whatever you want to put there. Now, the feet on the case, they're uh, nicely rubberized. They're rubber inserts, inserts into plastic bits. So, vibrations and noise should not at all be a problem with this case. And, you know, it is a silent case, so it should be pretty good noise-wise. It's probably the rear of the case, so below these uh, vents here, there's a button which will turn on an LED in here, or turn it off, and that lights up your rear I.O which you know, if you're having trouble accessing it in the dark, for example, you have lights there and it really helps a lot. Just think about how difficult it is to just put a USB in. No matter what the light, in the dark it's terrible. You know, it's four or five times before you get a USB cable in. Um, so you then get seven PCI slots. Room for a 120 or 140 millimeter fan. Now it comes installed with a 140, just like you have uh, Actually, this is the only 140. There are three 120s in the front. Two massive water, external water cooling grommets. They're really massive, actually. Good rubber, they don't come out. And then, other than this dust filter, you have the uh, power supply cover, which, like I just had a bit of a comment on on the previous review, there's no point in having thumb screws when you need a screwdriver to undo them. So, please, case manufacturers, think about that. Don't put thumb screws in with an air gun because people can't get them out later. Okay, so this is the left hand side of the case if you look back to front or the right side as most people will call it. Um, it's completely plain, um, matte black finish, nice powder coat, no unevenness in the powder coat. So I'm just going to move to the uh, left side. Now, here on the left, you get a in a big window, so it's not tinted or anything. This window it comes with oh, I hate that noise. So, you just have a protective film on the inside and on the outside. So, let's just take the panel off. Um, the brilliance with NZXT side panels is in the uh, the thumb screws because these NZXT thumb screws you can undo them, but they still stay within the uh, where's my within the side panel they don't just come out which is really cool so you get some sound deadening here more protective film um, some flex to the panel but not excessive especially considering how big the, uh, the the window is because the window just shows everything there's an awful lot going on inside this case uh, I'm gonna work my way from the bottom up so the power supply cover has the same plastic uh, cover with uh, blue LEDs behind it. No green LEDs, sadly. Um, blue LEDs, don't ask me why, guys. Uh, probably because it has them on the white version, which is the base model. This is a special edition. But given that NZXT does a lot of different LEDs, uh, having green LEDs in there would be pretty cool. Uh, we have two SSD mounts, easily removable. You just Nope, not easily removable because again, they over tighten the thumb screws. Bad, can't show it. Um, you get cable rad and grommet here for your graphics card or cards, and then two more here for your front connectors. We have two more cutouts here, which is new to me. I wouldn't, you know, it's probably if you uh, put an MATX board in there that you can have the same thing as these, but then up there. So then we have. The back plate of the motherboard doesn't move around much. All of the uh, standoffs are already installed, except for one right here, because if you put this one in, uh, and then there's two more there, but if you uh, put the wrong motherboard standoffs in, it might short out your motherboard, so they don't put all of them in. Now something I noticed is, I don't know if you guys can notice, but right here in the top, there's already some paint that has come off from the side panel which isn't really great, but you know, you'll, you'll never notice. Um, we have a oddly shaped but giant CPU cutout, so if you're swapping coolers with the motherboard inside the case, you'll be good. And then, you know, we have the, uh, the new FN140 
rear fan and instruction booklet which is not coming out right now and then a, a pretty stealthy front design now as I showed earlier there's no optical stuff going on with this case which is great because no one needs optical drives anymore so let's just take out the other side panel so that I can get to the accessory box which I'm needing a screwdriver for so uh, in the comments you can make as many jo jokes as you want about me not being a man but I have no idea why they would make it that tough anyway with the uh, standard cables in there there's already quite some damage done to the um, foam so I know from previous reviews that I read that it's gonna be pretty tight back there but luckily we have tons of room um, here in the bottom and if that wouldn't be enough we can still stack it upwards a bit and there's I'm even gonna count them this time because there's a massive amount of them you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen then I'd say close to 20 when you add these in the bottom to them so probably over 20 um, zip tie hooks let's just get this stuff out so in here we found we find the uh, this is the front connector so you get USB 3 USB 2 HD audio which no one ever uses but it's good that they're no longer including the uh, AC 7997 uh, thingy which everyone just cut off anyway and then the front panel connectors now for these fans they use this fan splitter so power goes in here I guess and they can split it up to 10 different 3 pin fans uh, I don't think 4 pin fans will actually fit in there and this one I don't know that's the cool thing about having your camera always on a dolly but this one's actually um, a bit crooked from them tightening this a bit too much uh, anyway the entire fan is connected fan system is connected with this Molex uh, connector here in the bottom so we'll just stuff everything underneath there so let's zoom out again we'll roll out and for some reason the focus ring on this camera is the other way around which is incredibly confusing for me uh, in the top we have another uh, connector so this does the LEDs the uh, LED in the back there's cape, the uh, fan is mounted in there as well so if you want to turn off all the uh, the lights you just unplug it and I guess if you just unplug this one or this one you won't have to deal with any blue LEDs coming out of the case now one of the main things NZXT has changed is this um, drive um, you know the uh, hard drive tray thingies so what's so brilliant is NZXT always <laughs> NZXT always used these um, plastic drive base like every single other company out there and plastic bays aren't really good they're toolless completely toolless but they're never any good so with these you again get the screws that don't come out uh, you get rubber mounts you just hard mount your hard drive or SSD you can put a hard drive or an SSD on there if you've got really long screws I think you might even if you have long screw, long enough screws for these or if you just mount it with two you could probably put your SSD on the top uh, hard drive on the top SSD in the bottom because they don't use any common holes so anyway let's get to our accessory box which is in there with a twist tie that I should have undone some time ago there we go just pull it and it will come out So, just a, a uh, cardboard box, apparently it opens from the top. So, in the box, as always with NZXT, you find a, uh, there's a bunch of different little bags inside there. So, everything's labeled, there's an awful lot of zip ties, like really an awful lot, I'm not even going to count them. Um, so, we have small screws for hard drives SSDs we have a uh, 
a single motherboard standoff with a like a thumb screw you put over on top of that to make it toolless. A black NZXT sticker, a book. I, I first thought this was a blue NZXT sticker, and they were gonna make one in every uh, different color, but it's just a little booklet showing the phantoms and maybe other stuff if I were to go in more detail. Uh, more screws, and they, they all come labeled. So this is a M35 flat, if you can actually read it, and then fan screws, four of them, and motherboard screws. That's pretty much it for the accessories. So what I'm now going to do is, first of all, take some beauty shots. And then when, that, when that's all done, um, we're going to build the system in here. I actually wanted to show you guys this as well. So the front panel just comes off. You don't have to unclip anything because you can just yank it off. Really. So you just grab it at the bottom, pull it off. And the front panel will come off and it's the same with the top panel. And on the front you have this sound deadening once again. And you then have a completely easily cleanable and removable fan filter. I love big ass fan filters like this. It would be even cooler if you could pull it out from the bottom without taking the front panel off. But because it's so easy I'm not really going to complain about that. So in the front we have three 120mm uh, fans uh, all on rails so you can put 15mm uh, spaced radiators but also 20s on there. And then you can also put dual 140s in. Alright guys, I'm going to do the conclusion and the build experience in one video and then I'll cut some cool images in and everything. So, oh, and also the entire build is in a time lapse right behind this conclusion. So you can watch the entire build if you want to. And I even censored out the swearing this time. Because, and this is my first run and it's the reason, and I'm going to say it right away, this case only got a gold award. It would, I would have given it a platinum award if the thumb screws were actually removable with your fingers. Because they're cold thumb screws, you should be able to just undo them with your thumb, turn them, they should be loose. And then they put them in with like those electric screwdrivers or air guns, I think, because it's ridiculous. I even had to get like a, a vice grip to actually get one of them out. So take care of that case manufacturers. It's really annoying and really important and it's costing you a platinum award. But gold award, um, because it's such a brilliant case, uh, airflow is actually really good. I was a bit scared because you know you have very very limited because you only really got one and a half centimeters of holes in there in the front but below here it's completely open so that's really really going to help you uh, with your airflow well not really going to help you but you then got three 120s that you know kind of even it out uh, massive dust filter and because you have three intakes and only one exhaust you're going to have positive air pressure which is going to mean your case doesn't really get dusty in ever while still getting good cooling performance. So that's all very lovely. Now there is one little thing other than the annoying thumb screws that I'm going to complain about, namely the paint job. Now I was doing up uh, screws and I first noticed it when I took the side panel off that it would scratch really easily. But when I was putting uh, the screws on the power supply, then for some reason it just completely chipped off. The paint just completely went. Now. In a region like a power supply, which is always hidden behind something, you'll, you'll never notice it on the power supply. But it's just, you know, it's a brand new case, it's 110 euros, and the paint staying on as well as the thumb screws would actually be a good thing. Other than that, though, no complaints. Building in it is incredibly easy. You just drop stuff in there, it fits, and you're done, really. It's just dropping it in and it'll work. Uh, the hard drive base or caddies or whatever you're going to call them, they're really, really easy to use. Uh, some other reviewers were complaining because you only f click them in once they're completely in because they have these little squares that pins go into. Uh, but it wasn't, you know, if you actually look at what you're doing, it's not really a problem. So I'm happy with everything except the thumb screws and the paint job. But the paint job where it doesn't scratch though, it's remarkable it's it's really really good it does pick up fingerprints uh, rather easily so I was always making sure my hands were completely clean while working on this but other than that it's it's perfect so I'm now gonna shut up and oh no before I shut up do the like dislike share subscribe thingy you know what you have to do and um, 
I'm now going to cut in the uh, time lapse of the entire build, which took me about 40 minutes to build this complete computer. And then, you know, do like the custom lights and everything. So, uh, thank you all very much for watching and subscribe to Unicorn Reviews.